Hey, hey pals. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Paige Miller, your host, and I am coming to you from Frame and Fiber, which is my local yarn shop and picture framing shop in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. So if you ever find your Self in my area of the Jersey Shore, I would love for you to pop in because I'd love to meet you. Uh, let's see. Welcome. Did I say this is Frame and Fiber? Yes, welcome to Frame and Fiber. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Um, so, I do want to let you know that I have, I hope, first of all, I hope you had a great summer. Summer next week is Labor Day. Oh my gosh. So I hope you had a great summer. I had a pretty good summer. Vacation was lovely. I have footage of my time with my family up in New York State. We rented a house and it was so much fun. So I have that to share with you. I have footage of, I took foot, oh, I was spinning. So I started, I didn't really, well I started, I didn't, finish, but I participated in the Tour de France. Nope, definitely did not participate in the Tour de France. <laughs> Tour de Fleece. I drop spindled. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, it coincided with my vacation, which I thought I'd have a lot of time to spin, but I was with my nephews and not much spinning or knitting got done. I got some done, but not a lot. <laughs> Mostly I was playing with them and swimming and having a great time. So I did not finish my tour de fleece. Oh my gosh, I can't say it, tour de fleece. <laughs> so, but I took video of my beginning anyway. So I was gonna share that with you. I also took video of or did a review, I did a review, oh my gosh, of a Yarn Swift. Um, it's a really good one, I love it. And so I have those videos to share with you. I'm definitely going to put some of this, those videos at the end of this um, clip, at the end of this actual video that I'm making now, um, but I don't think it will be all of it. So you're definitely going to see the Tour de Fleece footage that I took and possibly the Lake George stuff. The Yarn Swift review will definitely be next time around. So, <laughs> how are you guys? I'm doing well. Uh, what's new? Well, I don't know if you guys pay attention to my Instagram, pretty much Instagram, uh, or anything that goes on around here. You will have noticed that Allison of Daisy Lane Design has moved to Colorado. Uh, she ran her business here with me inside Frame and Fiber. So she and I shared the workspace in the back room. And then she had her fabrics and her sewy items. So her bags and her um, cash envelope budgeting systems. She had them in the shop. So the shop is a little sad without Allison. Um, once she's all settled in Colorado, she will send to me some knitting bags and zip around pouches and the things that she makes and she's getting pretty well known for if I, if I don't say so myself. No, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, <laughs> go check Allison out. Daisy Lane Design on Instagram to see what she's up to. Uh, and if you would like to catch up with, um, Al and myself, we go live on the Instagram once a week. We used to do it on Wednesdays, but now we're gonna switch to Thursdays because <laughs> Wednesday, now that she's in Colorado, I work by myself. And so I can't really go live with her if a customer walks in because she's in Colorado and there's no one here to help me with my customer. So we're switching it to Thursday. So join us there. This coming Tuesday is my last knitting on the beach. Super sad. I love knitting on the beach. But we will be back here at the frame shop around the table knitting at 6 p.m. every Tuesday night. So definitely pop in if you'd like to. I know a lot of the regulars who aren't really into the beach will be making their way back to the table to knit with us. So I look forward to them and crochet. So knit and crochet. Come hang out with us. 
Uh, so I think that's it as far as announcements. Um, not much to talk about. Things coming up, I guess I could point out to you. Um, the New Jersey Sheep and Wool is September 7th and 8th. I was going to be a vendor. Allison was going to fly back and we were going to vend together, but I had to cancel. Um, just some family things going on, so didn't I kind of had too much on my plate and I wanted to take some of that responsibility off, so I'm not doing that. However, she and I, Allison that is, uh, we will be vending at Needles Up at uh, New York Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York, so if you are, no, we're not going to be at the festival. <laughs> oh, don't. We will be at Needles Up the day before the festival. So Friday, oh rats, I forget the date. October 18th? Uh, I'll put it here or I'll link it below. Um, so Al and I will be vending at Needles Up this year. It is from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on that Friday before Rhinebeck. Uh, there's a bunch of opportunities for knitters to spend the entire day at uh, in Rhinebeck so I hope you take advantage of all of the fun things if you didn't buy tickets for India Untangled uh, if you weren't able to get them that's totally cool because there is the yarn bazaar happening in Rhinebeck hosted by Christy Glass she is also hosting that girl is I don't know how she does all the stuff she does but she is hosting or helping or coordinating that event with 18 vendors I believe and then she's hosting a bowling night and a knit night and a don't know how she's not exhausted all the time <laughs> plenty of things to do and one of those things is needles up needles up is in my opinion the best <laughs> partly because uh, Sue and Chelsea who organize it have really um, made it just a lovely experience um, the vendors that they've chosen are so fabulous they have a couple new vendors this year uh, Sandy by the Lakeside is the newest so that's fun and um, yeah I just I'm looking forward to it I can't wait to do it again I will be there with my knit mats which I do have a few I should show you let me go grab them okay so knit mats so these are my knit mats. I'm sure if you've seen any of my back issues, issues, episodes, um, you have seen these. This is my crocheted version. I have a few of those. And then this is a framed, one that's framed, and one that is not framed. And guys, you're supposed to take this cat picture out of the frame and put your own picture in. <laughs> Just kidding you can keep mr matthews if you really love him so yeah this is framed uh i think i'm not going to list these in my etsy shop until after new york sheep and wool because i don't know if i'm gonna have a lot of time to make um a, like a ton i mean i have plenty to go to the festival with but if i sell some now it would make me nervous so i will update the etsy shop once um, needles up is over I will be bringing uh, let's see needles up Maryland I brought a bunch of the little accessories and notions that I sell here at the shop so I'll have some cocoa knits merchandise with me I will have Katrinkle's merchandise with me Heidi and Lana stitch markers and stitch marker jewelry I will have with me yeah so I think it's gonna be great I'm really looking forward to Needles Up and seeing all you guys and just, it's a blast and I really, the support that you guys give to all of us and it's incredible and I would not be in business without you guys. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, it sounds so disingenuous, but seriously, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I just can't help that I sound like a maniac. <laughs> All right, so what do I want to talk about first? How about a whip? Let's, let's talk about whips. Works in progress, that is. Uh, this one I started. I swatched for this 
project the day after. So Rhinebeck was over on the Sunday. Paul Miller and I, he picked me up in Rhinebeck and we went up north and rented a little house and had a, a week of just quiet vacation and I swatched for this project then. So this is 10 months in the making <laughs> and I doubt I'm gonna have it ready for Rhinebeck, which is a bummer, but so this is my Bodhi cardigan, and yes, I finished the body. I blocked the body. Why did I block the body? Because Elizabeth Dougherty, the pattern designer, is a sweater guru, and she recommended doing that, and so I did. It fits me so fabulously. I absolutely love it. I need to do the sleeves. I had picked up a sleeve, and I didn't like the way I picked it up. Um, I didn't, the, the sleeves weren't even. There were more in the front than the back or vice versa, I can't remember. Not sleeves, stitches, holy moly. Uh, so yeah, I need to pick up um, for my sleeves and cast them on. And then I need to do my big old brioche shawl collar. And then I also need to do, <laughs> I have pocket holes, but no pockets. So this is going to fit pretty amazing once it is all shawled and shawled, not shawled, collared, <laughs> once I get the collar finished. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Luna Gray Fiber Arts, which is scrum deliumptious. It is a worsted weight superwash. No, is it superwash? No, this is not superwash. It's a worsted weight merino. And I am loving it. I have had absolutely zero issues with this pattern. And you can see that it's kind of like, I don't want to say complicated. There's a lot to it. It's not, you know, just, there's a lot. I have had no issues with it. It's just taken me a long time because can't really put a finger on why it's taken me a long time. My knitting this year, I have to say, has been pretty minimal. So, of course I have another, I have a whip to show, I mean a, a finished object to show you. <laughs> but we'll do that after whips. Uh, I thought this was a hoe, but it's not. Did I say what it, needles? I can't, hold on, let's go back to Bodhi. Um, the details on this pattern are pretty awesome. She has a rolled edge is the hem, which is so pretty, which matches the rolled edge of the pocket. I think I'm into four skeins of yarn just for the body. I think that's, is that true? Maybe five, maybe four, no, it can't be five. It has to be four. I should take better notes. I'm the worst. I'm using my Chowgu interchangeable set for this pattern and I'm using all different cable lengths and I think I have used a size US 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and I want to say an 8, but that can't be right. Maybe a 7. Anyway, I've used five different needle sizes for this pattern. <laughs> Each stitch pattern has a slightly different gauge than the other, and so you have to change the pattern, or change the needle that you're using. So it is a little bit rough, but I love my Chowku interchangeables because it has made it so easy. I bought extra cables so I wouldn't have to take, you know, things apart. I use the, um, the end stoppers it's been perfect so okay now we can go back to my sock <laughs> so you probably you may recognize this yarn uh, this is called mind the gap dyed by trailing clouds I finished a pair of these last year for my friend Babs she and I last year last September I think it was September 
we went to London together and so I wanted to make her a pair of these socks and myself so we could be twinsies and remember our time together in London and these stripes coordinate with the colors of the different train lines of the London Underground so that's pretty cool it is not a finished object because they didn't cut in my heel yet <laughs> Can you see here, um, this side, this is the bottom, this is stockinette on that side, and that side is ribbed. So the top of the foot is ribbed all around the leg, and then the bottom of the foot is just plain stockinette. So I put it on my blocker thinking I was finished, and nope. So I'll cut that heel in tonight. Uh, this is just a, oh, and I also have to, I've been doing so knitting in the round, I've been doing my, I've been casting, casting on, I've been starting a little bit differently, depending on what it is. But with this, the socks for sure, um, I knit for a few rounds flat. So this is a three by one rib and then plain stockinette on the foot. I started cuff, obviously, because of my cast on, my flat cast on and then I kitchenered the toe. My toe is just a typical wedge toe. It's a normal basic. These are as basic as you can get. Well, I guess not. Plain vanilla would be as basic. But I kind of, I don't know what I was thinking. I mean, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with these socks. I'm pleased with them. But for some reason with my cuff, I did my cuff only, I, it's a rib sock. Why do I need a cuff? I have no idea. But I did a one by one rib for the cuff, and then I went into my one by three. Why didn't I just do, can you hear that? Dog barking, that's Sadie. Hi Sadie, my upstairs neighbor's dog. Uh, anyway, I really love the way a ribbed sock fits. So much, so much, so. I think this might be my new vanilla for me. The new vanilla is just doing a basic rib. Um, and I did one stripe pattern repeat before I started the bottom of the foot. Yeah, so there it is. That's my sock. This is my sock blocker from Patricia. Knitography. All right. So those are my whips. I can show you my, should we stick with knitting or should I go to spinning? No, let's stick to knitting. This is called the Brookfield. Oh no, I forget her name. The Brookfield shawl. Down here. <laughs> I'll put the pattern designer down there. This is a fun knit and that if I had I may do this again in the in the proper size it's a little bit small and the reason why it's a little bit small is I only had one skein of this yarn it's a gradient yarn made by um, wool's creation wool's creation oh my gosh you guys I'll put that down here too. I bought this yarn at either Maryland Sheep and Wool or New Jersey Sheep and Wool. I cannot remember. It was last year. And it's gorgeous. It is five strands of not twisted threads. Uh, I believe four of them are a cotton silk blend. And then the fifth one is a twisted like two ply merino super skinny this is definitely either like fingering weight or sport weight at the very very heaviest um but i didn't have enough yardage to do the entire pattern repeat so i think i'm missing like two repeats i think it would be much i mean this will be fine as a scarf for sure but i think it would be better longer it's so pretty Here's the pattern. Oh, it doesn't know where to focus, does it? <laughs> there we go. So isn't that a pretty pattern? And then it gradiates, gradiates all the way 
down to the dark. So super light to super dark, and I just think it's such a pretty knit. Uh, I would love to do it in another gradient because I think the gradient adds to it. Um, but so I played yarn chicken with this too. <laughs> it was 450 yards on the ball of yarn. And let's see, as I was binding off, I made it to here. So I bound all of this off and I got to here and I just needed to bind the rest of this off. It's like maybe, I don't know, 14 inches, 15 inches. I just, so I, so I checked my stash and I had a tiny little ball left over from my scar, my, my shawl. My shawl that um, Mars designed, it's the Ritual Shawl. The border that I did on this shawl was Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, it is her gosling base, I think. It feels like it has cashmere in it. Uh, but it is her espresso colorway. And it matched perfectly. So I saved, I saved it. I didn't have to rip out anything. <laughs> I love playing yarn chicken and winning. I mean, I, I'm, I'm calling this a win, even though I had to use different yarn because I didn't have to rip anything out. So that's a win, right? You agree? <laughs> so yeah, it's so pretty. I wore it, I had a dress on, where did we go? Paul Miller and I. But I just wore it over my shoulders because it's the middle of October. No, it's not, it's the middle of August. And it was just nice and small. Uh, it will not be a good shawl for the winter because of the yarn that I picked and the amount that I did not finish of the pattern, but it'll be a cute scarf. So Brookfield, look for it. It's fabulous. Fabulous. All right, that's Mars's yarn. Nope, Mars's shawl. <sighs> What's next? Is that all the knitting? It's all the knitting. Okay, what's in here? Nope, that's my other sock. I'm starting the second sock. So I wanted to show you the spinning that I did. I shared this on the Instagrams. I don't think I talked about this in my last episode. Um, so I have a finished object. This is 180 plus 40 is 120. So this is 120 yards of hand spun. Unfortunately, I don't know what fiber it is and who dyed it because this was a gift from my friend Sharon. Seashore Sharon gave this fiber to me. And so I spun that up. Let's put Mr. Matthews. He can be my... Okay. There we go. <laughs> so that right there is my hand spun. And I love it. There is... It's not... I mean, here's a thick piece right here. And then here's a super thin piece. Let me just compare them so you can see. So um, let's grab this blue one. Blue one. Okay. So you can see the difference in the yarn, um, but it's hand spun and I'm pretty new at spinning. Well, I've been spinning now for a couple of years, but I only spin 15 minutes. I don't spin that often uh, and I only use my drop spindle. So this I spun on an Ashford, like a basic, beginner spindle that I bought at Port Fiber in Portland, Maine. Uh, yeah, so that's finished. It's like I said, 120 yards. I think it probably would be like a worsted or I'm going to say worsted because I don't know. See, this is what I don't know about spinning when you're making like because it's not a consistent yarn it changes back and forth and there's thin and there's thick like how do you average it out to know what the weight is i have no idea 
but it's super pretty. And I think I might want to make either like a hat or some fingerless mitts out of this. I think I have enough yarn to do that. And then the next one, this is yarn dyed by Emily, who is the dyer behind Wolfine Yarns. I love her color sense. She is so good. I think this yarn I spun a little bit more consistently. It still has thicks and thin spots, but I think I need to bring it to the, I belong to the Shore Fiber Guild. Belong to it. I, I haven't made a meeting in months because I just haven't fit it in, but I do belong to it. And maybe I can ask those ladies their opinion on what weights they are. I mean, I could do the little wraps per inch, but well, I guess I could. That could be an average if I take skinny parts and fat parts and put them all in. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> this is the yarn that Emily made or dyed, and it's the yarn that I made. It's the fiber she dyed, the yarn I made. So look how pretty it is. Isn't it lovely? I'm super in love with this. So this turned out to be a hundred and... How many yards is this? I think I had 110, and this is half of the the four, I think it was four ounces. So if it's 110 yards, four ounces, 110, and I'm hoping to get another 110, if that's 220 out of four ounces, wouldn't that be like a worsted weight? 220, right? Huh, DK maybe? <gasps> stinking cool. So I do have my spinning with me so I can show you how much I have left to go. Both of those I chain plied. Is chain plying and Navajo plying the same thing? I think it is. So anyway, chain ply, Navajo ply. I'm not sure which is the correct term. So this is my Bosworth spindle bought it at Maryland last year and I'm so in love with it. So this is my first spin on it too. Let's see. Oops. There we go. So that's the fiber that I've left. And then I've been keeping my fiber. I love pre-drafting. It's so much fun. I don't know how it's done on a wheel, but for me, my technique that seems to work for me, I like to separate my fiber into long skinny lengths and then I like to take those lengths and break them down even further to skinny lengths so like this is really that's pretty thick and I will break it down into the battery is gonna die isn't it yep. into something this thick so I've got this and that and then this, I like to pre-draft it. That is so much fun. And then when I get to the spinning part, the spinning goes pretty fast because I've already kind of spread out the fibers. I think I'm doing it correctly. Maybe someone, if you guys have any suggestions or if you're like, yeah, don't do that, that's a waste of time. But I enjoy doing it, so actually I'm gonna continue doing it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's that like, tug on the fiber when you pull it it's like I don't know it's really it's really satisfying and so since I talked about this I'm going to have to show you my video Paul Miller, you're a fiber genius. That's true. Crazy town.
my first time using fiber that I'm actually going to separate and pre-draft. Didn't know you had to do any of that. <laughs> had no clue. So I'm spreading out my fiber. I think I'm not going to try to be all fancy with color management. Being that, you know what, I'm gonna let me split this in half right now. Um, I'm not going to be fancy with my fancy color management because I'm so new to spinning. Even though I've been spinning off and on for the past couple years, I wouldn't say I have a handle on it. And I also wouldn't say that I know what I'm doing. So, but it's fun. And the only way I will figure out what I'm doing is by doing it. <laughs> Here I go. All right. So everything I read says I have to give the fiber some tugs. I guess it loosens up and separates any of the fiber that's been sticking to itself. I have my kitchen scale, scale, <laughs> my kitchen scale. So I'm going to weigh and make sure that I have an even amount of fiber for each ply, even if, like everyone tells me that I most likely won't spin them the same. One will be longer than the other. Oh yeah, that really works. Look, do you want to see? Oh wait, how do I do this? Hold on. Don't focus on me. Okay, see, that's what it looks like before I do this weird tuggy thing. Tuggy thing, you like that? Okay, now I'm doing the tuggy thing and it's blurry, I apologize. Of course now. Now look at it, it's totally different. Tuggy thing is cool. This is kind of fun. Oh my gosh, I'm going to show you the difference between the two braids when I have it finished. Let me keep going tuggy tuggy on this and then I'll take a little video of the two. So I took the braid, split it into two and I'm tugging the one, not tugging the other. So that way you can see the difference. It's really visible. All right, catch you soon. Noting okay. the of swords by the Oops. wall. Sheave. I finished tugging. I don't know what the technical term is, but basically it's tugging. Let me show you the difference in the piles. Okay. Yes, I'm in my bedroom. This is my messy bed. Okay. These are the two piles. Do you see the difference? You can, right? You guys can see it. This one's fluffier. It looks a lot more like fresh cotton candy, and this looks like cotton candy you save for the next day. <laughs> it's really cool, the difference. So those are two of the exact same lengths of the braid. So now I'm gonna put that one away since I didn't, I figured I'd just do one at a time. And now I'm going to split this again, and I think I'll start spinning. Oh, it's so much fun.
yeah, so I spun. I've been spinning. Not bad, right? I wish I could have finished the Tour de France. Dang it, Tour de Fleece. <laughs> but whatever. There's always next year. And I'm going to finish this pretty soon. Okay, so I think that's it. I will see you guys next time. And yeah, I would love to catch up with you. So follow me over on Instagram where I'm Paige the Framer. Or you can follow what happens here at the Frame Shop, which is Frame and Fiber. Both of those places. Both of those names. Paige the Framer, Frame and Fiber on Instagram. Follow me there and I will see you soon. Bye guys.